In this video, we're going to investigate two different matrices, this original matrix here on the left and this new matrix here on the right. And we're going to try to identify which elementary row operation or operations are being performed to obtain this new matrix from this old matrix. And our three elementary row operations are as follow. Rule one, which is this one right here, we can take some row and we can multiply it by some non-zero constant C. Our second rule here is we can interchange two rows. And our third rule here is we can take one row, multiply it by a non-zero constant C, and add to it some other row to obtain a new row. So let's actually use these elementary row operations and try to figure out how this new matrix was formed from this old or original matrix. Well, our first rule says we can multiply one non-zero constant times a row. Now, if you look at our matrices, row one for both matrices are exactly identical. So yeah, we could have multiplied row one times a non-zero constant one to obtain the new row one. But more interestingly, we want to look at row two. Row two in the original matrix is negative two, zero, and two. And row two in the new matrix is negative 11, negative 15, and negative seven. So in order for rule one to apply, we need to find some non-zero constant C that we can multiply this first row here to get this second row here. And this non-zero constant C has to be the same value for all elements in the row. So we need to be able to multiply negative two, zero, and two by this non-zero constant to obtain negative 11, negative 15, and negative seven. And something's telling me rule one doesn't apply because although we could find a constant C to multiply negative two to get negative 11, we can't use that same constant to multiply zero to get negative 15. And that's because zero times any constant is zero, right? Zero times one is zero, zero times 100 is zero, and zero times negative 3,472 uh, is also zero, right? So there's no way we could multiply zero times some value C to get negative 15. So rule one doesn't apply. How about rule number two? And rule number two says we can take one row and we can interchange it with another row. Well, if we look at the new matrix, this row right here, row two in the new matrix, is negative 11, 15, negative 15, and negative seven. This row is nowhere to be found in this original matrix. So there's no way we could swap two rows in the original matrix, this and this, we can't swap these and get this new matrix because row number two in the new matrix is not in the original matrix. So rule two doesn't apply. Well, how about rule number three? Rule number three says that we can take some row, row J, and we can add to it some other row multiplied by some non-zero constant to get a new RJ. And in order to clear up some space, and in order to make things a little easier to write out, I'm gonna clear the screen. Rule three says that we could add a multiple of row one to row two to produce a new row two. In other words, we could take row two, add to it some multiple of row one to produce this new row two, which is right here. And in order for this to work, we need to be able to multiply every element of row one by some non-zero constant C in order to produce the values in row two of the new matrix. So what I'm saying is that if we look at both of these rows and we look at the first element of row two in the original matrix, well, that's negative two. And we need to add to it some non-zero constant C multiplied by the first element of row one, which is three, and that should yield negative 11 the first element of the new row two. And if we look at the second element in the original row two, that's zero. And we need to add to it some value and some non-zero constant times the second element of row one in the original matrix, which is five. And that should give us 
negative 15. And finally, the third element of row 2 in the original matrix is 2, and we need to add to it some non-zero constant c multiplied with the third element of row 1 in the original matrix, 3, and that should give us negative 7. So these three equations that I just wrote out here is simply an expanded form of this. We need to take every element of row 2 in the original matrix and we need to add to it some non-zero constant c multiplied by every element in the first row of the original matrix to get the second row of the new matrix. So if we look at this first equation here, we could add 2 to both sides and we'll get c times 3 is equal to negative 9. And if we solve that out, if we divide both sides by 3, we found out c is equal to negative 3. If we look at our second equation, well, 0 plus c times 5 is equal to negative 15. That's c times 5 is equal to negative 15. And if we divide both sides by 5, we find out c is equal to negative 3. And finally, our third equation, if we subtract 2 from both sides, we'll get c times 3 is equal to, well, negative 7 minus 2 is negative 9. And we find that c is equal to negative 3. And this should tell us something very important. All constants that we found in these three equations are exactly the same. And this should be true because we're multiplying every element in row 1 times the same c value. And we're adding that entire row to the original row 2 to get the new row 2. So if I scroll down a little bit, so the elementary row operation that is being performed to get this new matrix up here, this new matrix right there, is that we're taking row 2 of the original matrix and we're adding some non-zero constant, which is negative 3, times every element of row 1 to get the new R2 in the new matrix. 